coming up next on We Are Marshall today, 40 years later, we still remember. We'll take you to this year's memorial service for the 1970 crash. Plus, keep it in touch on campus. We'll tell you about these digital screens. We Are Marshall today is up next. Hello and welcome to We Are Marshall Today. I'm Leah Clark Payne. And I'm Dan Hollis. Forty years ago, a chartered jet carrying 75 Marshall University football players, coaches and supporters crashed just short of the runway at Tri-State Airport, killing all on board. Dan, it's part of the Marshall family story and like most family stories, remembering is part of the healing process. November 14, 1970, to live on in the lives of all of us and those that go beyond us. Everyone that was alive then knows where they were, what they were doing, and can recall some of the activities they were involved in immediately after. And as we remember that, let's remember the family, the friends, the students, and all the people that are involved in this and continue to remember forever. I was in eighth grade at Hurricane Junior High School. Uh, when the crash happened, I felt your pain. I asked the same questions we all ask as to why. I saw Coach Lingle and I saw the community bound together and bring the football program back. And I saw the struggles that got to, to getting back to winning championships. There are bigger football programs in America than Marshall University, but there's not a football program in America that's more important to their school, more important to their community, more important to their fan base in the entire country than Marshall University. There's many things that I'm looking forward to in my life, but one thing I really look forward to is one day I will meet those 75 people. And I hope they will say to me, Mike, I'm proud of what you did and what you people did for Marshall University. In remembering, we honor the memory of those who lost their lives and confer upon them our utmost respect. In remembering, we find comfort and peace. Anyone who has ever lost a loved one has experienced the wound that opens and forever imparts an emptiness in our hearts and spirits, a void which is never really refilled. It is a day remembered in tears and emotion, and a day of special pilgrimage, which will continue each fall and spring for as long as this institution stands. Since it has been four decades when the lives of thousands in Huntington, in West Virginia, and even across the nation were shattered, I am moved by the sheer and quick passage of time since it happened. Last year at the conclusion of this ceremony, um, when they come out and place the wreath at the fountain base, and when I heard the last pardon me when I heard that last drop of water finally stop I suddenly felt a, a rush of emotion And it felt as if my heart had actually stopped at the same time. Well, I re realized that it didn't because I suddenly remembered my guys. Joining us now to talk more about Marshall Athletics is our new, relatively new, Associate Director for External Affairs, Frank Gardenia. I, th I think I'm new and old. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here. I'm old chronologically, but new in terms of recent service. So. Well, give us a, give us a, a brief description of uh, what you do here at Marshall and, and your career. Well, I went to school here, graduated in 1976, and uh, have always been in kind of the external areas of athletics. The external areas are things like broadcasting, radio and TV, which I've done a lot of over the years. Uh, marketing, promotions, sports information, PR, media relations, fundraising, development, and uh, uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'm kind of helping to oversee all those areas, working with the external staff, working with the Big Green, uh, working with sports information, working with radio, TV, so just a lot of the things that, a lot of what I call the fun parts of athletics, really, that's uh, what I'm involved with. It's the, it's the area of 
game management and game presentation, a lot of things that the public sees, that's what I'm involved with. And you've been doing a bang up job. There, have, You've made some changes this football season, um, really emphasizing um, the program's history and bringing back players and coaches. Speak to that a little bit about why you're doing it. Well, I understand the program's history, as does the new director of athletics, Mike Hamrick. He played here. I was here when Mike played. Uh, I worked here and was a student here when Mike played, and he understands the history, and he knows I understand it as well. So we both have that built-in advantage. I went to school here. I worked here for 10 years after going to school here and then left and was gone for 20 years. But even during that 20-year period when I was at most of that time at Penn State, um, I still stayed in touch with the program. I was involved with things here. I followed the program here. So, so I understand the program's history. I know how important this university is and the athletic program is to the people here and to Marshall people. So I think it's good to tell those stories. I think sometimes if we don't tell them, they get lost. And so, yeah, we've tried to bring back a lot of people who uh, have been involved in the program but maybe have been a little disconnected over time. You, um, you say you definitely have a, a history here. And um, you were a play-by-play -play announcer for Marshall right. in the 80s. Uh, 1977 um, to 86, yeah. So what's it like returning to your roots, so to speak? Uh, it's good. It's, it's, it's hard to explain because uh, there's, there's something comfortable about it. It's kind of like putting on you know, a pair of old shoes that feel good and comfortable. It feels comfortable to be back here. Uh, the, the hard parts are that, that everything's different. Sometimes you think things will be the same. Nothing stays the same. It shouldn't. I mean, it, it should change. I mean, I've had so many people say, well, uh, isn't has, look how this has changed since you've been, been gone. And the campus has changed so much. And I think, well, it should have changed, should have progressed and improved and changed. It's been 20 so years or so since I've been here, and, and things do happen. They do change. But uh, it's been good. It's always good. I think that as West Virginians, we always have a deep bond with our state, and we're a very root-oriented people. Maybe that's the Appalachia part of our, our heritage, but more so than a lot of states. I, I don't sense that with a lot of states, but West Virginians, we're very home-oriented, very root-oriented, so it's always good to be back and be around old friends and, and around your home. You have a talent for um, teaching people about sports. I've heard several people who are not necessarily sports fans have heard you uh, comment on different television programs, radio programs, and they said, Frank Gardenia, he, he actually can explain sports to me. What really? Do you, yes. Wow. What do you attribute that to? Well, I think I understand it. Uh, I've always enjoyed it. Uh, I've followed it since I was young. I knew kind of what I wanted to do at a young age. A lot of people don't know what they want to do. I've always known I wanted to work in sports. Now, that role has changed some over the years, and, and my role has changed, but uh, I've always enjoyed it. I, I think I do understand when you're I'm 50 in my mid 50s and and have worked in it professionally now for almost 35 years. So you do learn certain things and you do understand certain things. I think the one thing you do is sometimes you take for granted your knowledge and you think, well, everybody knows this, but they don't. And because you've been around it, you you do learn certain things. You understand certain things. So I just try to tell people what I what I know and what I've learned. And if it helps, great. Uh, the program, the athletics program, is, is in a bit of a transition, relatively new athletic director, new coaches. Yep. Um, what are you going to be doing? Where are we going from here? Well, I think it's an incredible transition, unusual transition, because very seldom do you, in the period of a year, change the athletic director, football coach, men's basketball coach. Those are the most visible programs. Those are the programs that have the most financial potential. To change all three of those roles in, in one year's time, that's very unusual. So it's a critical time. I think it's also critical in that we just changed conferences a few years ago. And it's been a major adjustment for Marshall to go into Conference USA. I understand budgets and how they impact how you can compete. And it's been a little harder for us to compete in this league because our budget is significantly smaller than most of the people that we compete against. Uh, some of our infrastructure is significantly less than some of the people that we are competing against. So we're trying to, uh, to make do with what we have and to maximize our potential with somewhat limited resources compared, again, to the people that we're competing against. And uh, we're trying to grow those resources. So those are the major challenges right now to try to compete in Conference USA. Right, so that's, those are the short-term goals. 
Long-term goals, where do you see Marshall University Athletics in five to ten years down the road? Uh, that's hard to answer in this regard in that there's so much change with conference turnover and conference realignment that it's hard to predict anything in college athletics. Who, who, who thought we would see Nebraska in the Big Ten, which we're going to see? I mean, it's goofy right now. The Big Ten has 12 teams. The Big 12 has 10 teams. You know, that doesn't make sense, but that's <laughs> what we have in college athletics. So that's hard to predict. The one thing I think we can predict is that we, we need to be as good as we can be, you know, and where that has us competing, who knows. But we need to be as good as we can be, and we also need to be something that is a tremendous asset to our university. One of the things I believe in the most is that college athletics is as good a marketing tool for a university as anything on campus. When I was at Penn State, we went to the Rose Bowl the first time, applications went through the roof. I have a son who was at Alabama when they won a national championship in football and started competing again on the national level. Applications went through the roof. I remember being here in Huntington, 1984. We won our first Southern Conference basketball championship with Rick Huckabee. I remember talking to car dealers locally who said car sales all of a sudden picked up again. Athletics makes you feel good again. It makes people feel positive and it makes people want to attend your university. And that's something, whether that's right or wrong, that's the way it is with athletics. And hopefully athletics can continue to be an asset to Marshall University. And thank you very much for being here today. You're obviously an asset to the program. Thank you. It's good, to, it's good that somebody feels that way. <laughs> some days maybe I am, some days I'm not so sure, but thanks for saying that. You're welcome. And before we go to the break today, let's catch up with the College of Fine Arts. What we have here is a, um, a visitation from Charles Dickens. Um, I play Charles Dickens, uh, taken from uh, uh, an actual event in his life when he came to the United States in the late 1860s. Uh, he basically traveled this country reading from uh, his novels and of course his most popular was A Christmas Carol. Um, so in this uh, enactment, uh, Charles Dickens is coming yet again to Huntington, West Virginia because he was here last year and uh, he is uh, prepared to uh, do a presentation for the audience here and uh, basically plays all of the characters in A Christmas Carol. So I'm an actor playing Charles Dickens who's playing Tiny Tim, Uncle Scrooge, uh, and all the other characters. Um, we do this uh, annually as a benefit to support the Marshall University Theater Guild. As you think about your future, who's your competition? Who are your chief competitors? I notice some of you looking to your right and left at your neighbors. You need to think bigger, much bigger. Choose Marshall University. Big enough to matter, small enough to care. Immerse yourself in your learning. Connect with your professors and have fun learning. That's important too. Find your passion, pursue your dreams. Marshall University. Marshall University's study abroad program is in high gear this semester, encouraging students to consider the possibilities. Advisors say studying in a different country is an excellent way to develop cross-cultural skills needed in a global economy. Marshall has about 150 students studying abroad every year. The Study Abroad Fair is one way students can find out information for the program. You may also contact the Study Abroad office at 696-2379. Ceramic students are busy crafting and selling their pottery this holiday season to help defray the cost of traveling to a national conference. Members of the Karamos Pottery Guild sponsored a sale in mid-November. The students are raising money to help expenses for a conference in Tampa. If you missed the sale but are interested in checking out the pottery, give Jay Ike with the College of Fine Arts a call. Her telephone number is 304-696-3296. The holidays are quickly approaching, and for many, that means the season of giving. Marshall University kicked off its United Way campaign earlier this month with the goal of increasing the number of donors. Participants can choose their gifts from more than two dozen agencies who receive funding from United Way. Marshall University employees can give through a one-time contribution or through payroll. In addition to the United Way campaign, Marshall University is partnering with the United States Marine Corps annual Toys for Tots campaign. Collection boxes are located in the Memorial Student Center. Unwrapped new toys valued at $30 or less are being collected. Where do you find information about the latest news and weather? 
Well, most of us tune to some sort of screen-based media these days. They do, and screen-based media options are exactly what college campuses across the country are using to communicate. Well, perhaps they're not everywhere, but the goal for Marshall University's digital signage program is to have 50 large information screens like this one across campus. Digital producer Eric Heim says the idea for a comprehensive digital program was initiated by a couple of different groups on campus. Well, we came together and said well, we need to do um, a campus-wide deployment so everybody can see that if you put your... Uh, announcement in one location that's not your building, then more people will see it than just having a sign in one location. Digital signage is gaining popularity on college campuses as a way to connect with visitors, students, faculty, and staff on a 24-7 cycle. Heim says content for the signs is generated by student groups, faculty, and administrators, and is laid out by regions on the screen. We got news from around the country, news from around campus, uh, the Parthenon feeds on there. We have events that are pulled from our Resource 25, those are updated in real time, and just information about events on campus that people send in or uh, request to be posted. Information isn't the only component on the signs. Maps and directions are also available. We have a map. You can touch it and see where you're going on campus if you need to get. Right now it's just a campus map, not internal to the building. But if you needed to go from Old Main to Jimmy Jazz or Old Main to the Henderson Center, you touch that building, it'll draw a red line from Old Main to where you need to go. And also on the bottom of the screen, you've got um, directional arrows for the offices, but you can also touch those to see more information about that office. The screens are also used for security and weather alerts. If you'd like your group's information included on digital signage, email it to musign at marshall.edu. Joining us now is Marshall's Senior Vice President for Information Technology and Chief Information Officer, Dr. Jan Fox. Dr. Fox, thanks for being here. Thank you for asking me. We just uh, saw a story about digital signage and its rollout here on campus. How's it going so far? Oh, wonderful. You know, we've been at digital signage for some years, but you know, being able to control the message and be able to control times when it comes on, for example, emergencies, gives us uh, some institutional control that we really haven't had in previous versions of digital signage. Um, well, digital signage just has to be one of the ways that information technology has changed over the past decade or so. How difficult is it to stay current? Uh, you have to read a whole lot. You have to, we do lots of online training and webinars. We, we travel. Um, it's about learning. It's about doing. It's about thinking. And above all, it's about problem solving. And it's about everything communication. Just like you saw in the previous digital signage, we have to communicate the institutional voice in all kinds of conduits and ways. Well, one of the challenges of your job has to see all the new technology that's out there and figure out what's best for this campus. How do you guys go about that? Well, my role is to look at the system after next, not what just is coming up, but what's going to come up in the future, and, and basically aligning our institutional needs uh, with what those potential resources are, making sure it's something that's cost-effective, secure, and sustainable, and, and picking that direction. We've been incredibly successful on this campus because in technology you can really look at some shiny objects. You know, It's not always the, the best and the greatest at, the, at that very moment, but what is it going to look like three, five, and six years down the road? Uh, then, you know, how do you get rid of it? <laughs> that's, that's probably our biggest problem. Getting rid of things is not what's just coming up. Well, what is coming up? What is out there on the horizon? Well, it, it's, it's the world of, of mobility. Uh, you see lots and lots of mobile devices. Um, people aren't physically in front of computers as much, but they, they wear their computer, uh, basically. <laughs> it's, it's, it's with them all the time. So it changes back, back to the communication. You know, when you have a device with you at all times that you communicate with, it changes how you communicate. What we're seeing in the uh, academic realm is more personalized instruction. So in just uh, feeding the same information to 50 students the same way, you can personalize what the content for that student. So a student does very well on a subject and doesn't need as much help, they can go one path. A student who is struggling can, can get reme remediated and have different uh, conduits. The same way, just as you saw a digital signage, the information can be displayed differently to the individual. So in our portal, uh, if you're a senior, 
your information is much different than when you're a freshman. When you're a freshman, you get all the freshman information and, and notices and, and clues. When you're a senior, you wouldn't know how to graduate. <laughs> you wouldn't know when's graduation, what things do I need to do to prepare. So we can actually change that communication methodology based on who you are. Well, let's look at uh, uh, information technology and maybe different constituencies here on campus. And first, from the student's perspective, what does a student need to be aware of these days when it comes to technology? Well, you know, this is pen and pencils. That's a form of technology. You know, it, it's what tools you use to, to get your job done. And from a student perspective, their job is learning. So it depends on the student. Uh, for example, an art student may need different tools and techniques than a, a business student or an education student or a nursing student. But a smart student tries to use the best tools, whether it's technical, whatever, to achieve their goal of learning. Uh, and so the technologies are that easement to make it quick, um, document what you're doing so you don't have to go back and do everything to memory, and really look at learning instead of memorizing. Well, how might technology affect their, their non-academic life? Oh, I mean, it's the whole social networking. Mm, yeah. I mean, they, um, they're communicating in ways that we never dreamed of. And so it's, it's hard, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not a huge social network individual, but I have to live in that world because they live in that world. We have so many, I think 16 plus Facebook uh, users following us. We didn't have that a few years ago. So you have to prepare for what's happening out there and, and how they're communicating, not necessarily how you're communicating. Well, let's talk about some classes and, and online classes here at Marshall. Um, how many classes do we have? How many, what kind of classes are good online classes? Well, we've been at it since 1996. Um, we have over 300 that on totally online courses, and, and we need to, to discuss that. There's some courses that you, you never come to campus or you don't have to come to campus, but we have a whole series, a much larger number, that m basically everything's online, and part of the time you, you have to be at a certain place, maybe mm -hmm. four times during the semester you have to be at a location. So we're seeing uh, basically the online realm giving us flexibility for our students. Uh, we're having students who are um, were in Iraq and, and Afghanistan taking our courses. We have students that maybe had 90 hours of campus course and then their lives became complicated. They've got married, they have jobs, you know, they have families, they need that flexibility, so they're finishing the degrees online. But a huge portion are our own campus students who maybe want to take 12 traditional hours and maybe six online so they can finish on time. Or maybe they're athletes who, who need that flexibility in their schedules. Let's talk just briefly about professors in classrooms. How are they changing? You know, they, they change like students. You know, they're going to try to use the best technology to teach that says the students trying to use the technology to learn. So it depends on a good teacher usually uses whatever tools uh, they have and th th that will help the student. And it depends on the instructor, you know, what tool is best for them to relay that information. Uh, we have things now uh, called WIMBA. WIMBA is a technology that allows us not just to online you know, where you're reading things, but you interact. They're video links so that students can be um, in a cafe somewhere or be on, um, at the beach and still be taking a class and still be talking to their students, uh, fellow students and to their faculty member. When we get to the international market and you're trying to really deal with things like international marketing, seeing how another student in another country really deals in a business situation, looking at that culture, you, you have to feel that. So part of that you need to feel and interact uh, and that, that visual of a two-way video link from anywhere uh, has really opened up opportunities for us to make a very personalized education. Real quick, uh, you want to talk about CI Day coming up. CI Day is, stands for Cyber Infrastructure and it's basically the big IT Research Day. Uh, it's from the CI Tate Train Project, which is a big research grant received by the institution. It's on April the 7th. More information is on the Morning Marshall webpage under CI Day or on Facebook MUCI Day. You're obviously doing a great job because you were just named the recipient of the West Virginia State Technology Champion Award. Brag about yourself a bit. Well, I said it's, it's a wonderful award. It's basically the person in the IT realm of any IT organization in the state that impacts citizens the most. So above all, it's not our, our students. It's the K-12 community, healthcare, and all the citizens of West Virginia. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll be right back with more We Are Marshall Today after this. From the classroom straight to your computer. I teach international marketing online 100%. I conduct this class from my office, from my home, and it is 24-7 available to students across the country. I would say this has been one of the most challenging and rewarding experiences 
not only for me, for my students as well. Nationally accredited, affordable, convenient, MU Online. With the NFL season in high gear, Marshall University fans can usually catch a glimpse of a former Herd player in action. We are Marshall Today caught up with four of them at recent games in Cincinnati. Our coaching staff has allowed me to come in and, and fulfill a role that I've really enjoyed in trying to help Chad prepare. Uh, we look at it as, as a, a teamwork. I mean, we work together. We study really hard together. We, we at, uh, attack our offense together. We look at what we can do, and then we try to relay the message to our other teammates. And So I've got a great niche here in a role as far as leadership and doing the things I can. And, and physically, I feel really good, so if they need me, I'll be ready. I've pretty much been one of the guys who, who tries to be a leader on defense and more like a quarterback and just making sure guys are lined up right, doing what they're supposed to do. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much been my role each and every week since I've been here. I'm just here when, you know, something happens to seven, something go wrong, I'll be there. Now, you know, to answer the phone when it rings. But, you know, our whole goal here is, man, is to help each other. We've been doing this, you know, when we was playing actually against each other, we was helping each other, calling each other, talking to each other. So. Nothing's really changed, and it's always good to come to work every day with somebody that you know like that. You know, we had a couple guys go down. Um, I'm an interior backup for uh, all those three positions, so whenever somebody goes down, I need to go in there. Uh, left guard went down. I went in there. Then our center went down. I'm the backup center, so we had to move a tackle in, uh, and it was uh, it was a big mix up there for a little while, but we got it straightened out and uh, got a win. I think what we have to do, we've got to be patient. I think we have the right head coach and Coach Holiday, and um, you know, I think what we, we've got to do, we've got to be patient as a support group, and we've got to just keep to continue to uh, pour on the support. You know, they've had turnover, new coach this year, and they'll figure it out. This year is just figuring out the kinks, and um, I'm sure recruiting has a little bit to do with it, getting these guys in there. But uh, eventually, it'll turn around. You know, we got a good win last week, you know, and like I said, man, it's bragging rights. You know, we talk about, I talk about Marshall every week, you know, <laughs> every week, every week. So it was good for us to get a win. You know, we know those guys down there working hard. I just want to wish those guys good luck. And you know, it's, I still bleed a lot of green here, me and Ligurski. You know, we've been uh, we've been struggling a little bit. Uh, we're going to get it turned around. You know, I believe in Doc, and uh, he's going to get the program turned around for us. Um, you know, a few tough games here and there, uh, especially that WVU one, is what one comes to my mind. But uh, you know, we're going to get it straightened out. I think it might take a little while, but uh, we're going to get it figured out. A bunch of great guys there, and good luck to Chad Pennington with that shoulder injury. That's it for We Are Marshall Today. I'm Leah Clark Payne. And I'm Dan Hollis. Be sure to join us next time. Prescription drug abuse and misuse is a serious problem. Taken inappropriately, prescribed medication is just as dangerous and deadly as street drugs. So it's important for you to know it is illegal for you to share your medication or take medication prescribed to someone else.